Welcome back to the 10x Genomics Master Course series on spatial technology. In this episode, we will dive deeper into our Visium spatial technology platform and explore how you can utilize its gene expression capabilities for your research. With Visium, researchers can obtain whole transcriptome high throughput gene expression analysis from the whole tissue section and from a wide variety of sample types. This solution enables researchers to unravel the biological architecture in normal and diseased tissues and discover new tissue biomarkers. Furthermore, Visium can be easily integrated into your current workflow by using existing laboratory equipment and tools for tissue analysis. The essay is an end-to-end -end workflow from tissue section to library within one working day. Visium spatial gene expression solution can be applied in a multitude of research areas, including oncology, where you can study tumor morphology, heterogeneity, and microenvironment, immunology, where you can look at immune cell infiltration and activation with tissue context, developmental biology, where you can map gene expression to biological structures, Neuroscience, where you can map the various layers of the healthy and diseased brain. Pathology, where you can aid morphological conclusions by adding the dimension of gene expression. And also cardiovascular biology and beyond. In this master course, we will share some examples in the oncology and neuroscience fields. The workflow for Visium takes one day from tissue prep to sequencing ready libraries and is relatively straightforward, as you can see in this slide. To start, prepare your fresh frozen OCT embedded tissue sections with a cryostat and mount them onto the Visium slide. Then stain these samples using either our HNE or immunofluorescence protocol and capture images of your samples. Next, permeabilize the tissue, enabling barcoded spot capture. This is followed by a cDNA synthesis and denaturation step, and subsequently cDNA amplification and library construction. The samples are now ready to be sequenced by an Illumina NGS instrument. Unlike our single cell products, we cannot calculate sequencing depth based on cell input since we do not know how many cells are present in our tissue section. Instead, we use the tissue coverage to approximate the sequencing depth. We recommend 50,000 read pairs per spot covered with tissue and recommend that you estimate the percentage of capture area covered by the tissue section after looking at your HNE images. An example of four different tissues with varying levels of coverage is shown here. Human breast, mouse brain, and mouse spleen. The calculation is quite simple. You take the fraction of tissue covered area multiplied by the number of spots times 50,000 read pairs per spot. For mouse brain, this would be 0.5 of the tissue area times 5,000 spots times 50,000 reads, which is equivalent to 125 million read pairs for this library. Conversely, sequencing depth can also depend on the number of transcripts present in your tissue, which can be linked to the tissue type or tissue quality. On the left is the same mouse brain sample. But here, we are comparing it to a human glioblastoma sample, which has significantly fewer transcripts present within this region of the tissue compared to the mouse brain. As a result, you can see that the human brain reaches near saturation at 240 million read pairs, one sixth of the read pairs required to reach the same saturation level for the mouse brain sample despite the fact that the human brain tissue covers 12% more spots. Ultimately, our sequencing depth guidelines should just be used as a starting point. You will need to adjust based on your tissue type and quality 
as well as what level of saturation you'll need to answer the questions you're asking in your experiments. In this example, we wanted to see if the Visium gene expression clusters correlated with the pathologist's annotations. We had a pathologist annotate a different triple negative breast cancer sample and independently took the sample through our Visium workflow. Here are the annotations performed by the pathologist and you can see ductal in situ carcinoma circled in light green and invasive carcinoma circled in orange. When we perform independently the Visium gene expression solution and overlaid this data onto the H&E image, we saw that the clusters correlate extremely well with what the pathologist had annotated. Furthermore, you can see extreme heterogeneity within the sample indicating that what we found using molecular signatures was maybe more detailed than what a pathologist could find. Crucially, even though the pathologist annotated a large section of the tissue as invasive carcinoma, Visium data showed that this could be separated into at least four distinct cell clusters, red, yellow, black, and orange spots, based on the gene expression profile within the individual spots. In this study, researchers from the University of Tokyo identified predictive biomarkers for classifying and optimizing treatment of ductal carcinoma in situ, or DCIS, of the breast. They first analyzed the integrated clinical features of 431 cases of ductal carcinoma in situ, followed by deep sequencing analysis in a 21-case discovery cohort and a 72-case validation cohort. Thus, the five most critical markers of the aggressiveness of DCIS identified were age of less than 45 years, HER2 amplification, GATA3 mutation positivity, PIK3CA mutation negativity, and progesterone receptor protein negativity. Visium spatial transcriptome and single-cell DNA sequencing further revealed that GATA3 dysfunction but not PIK3CA mutation upregulates EMT, invasion, angiogenic pathways followed up by progesterone receptor downregulation. These results reveal the existence of heterogeneous populations of DCIS and provide predictive markers for classifying DCIS and optimizing treatment. Let us now move on to neuroscience. The brain is a very complex organ, but with fairly well characterized anatomy. Here you can see we have three images. On the left is an H and E stand image from a mouse brain. And on the right hand side are images from the Visium spatial gene expression solution for the same section. Here we highlight the unique molecular identifiers or UMI molecules for two known hippocampal genes, demonstrating that the Visium detection coincides with known expression patterns for these two genes. In addition to understanding the intricate spatial organization of the normal brain, it is also critical to see how those cell types are spatially perturbed in diseased brains. Here, we used the Visium spatial gene expression solution to assess spatial gene expression in the EPS-WE mouse model of familial Alzheimer's disease, in which the transgenic mice have overexpression of human amyloid precursor protein, or APP. On the left side, you see differential gene expression between wild type and transgenic mice, highlighting in the red circle the elevated expression of one specific gene, promelanin concentrating hormone, or PMCH. On the bottom right, you see examination of neurogranin or NRGN expression demonstrated a similar spatial pattern between wild type and transgenic mice. However, spatial examination of PMCH demonstrated increased expression within the hypothalamic region as well as other regions within the transgenic brain. At 10X Genomics, we see our single cell and spatial technologies as complementary to each other, 
as they enable one to gain a more complete view of biology. Here are two examples showcasing the power of combining these two technologies. On the left is a study from the Yanai lab at NYU that looked at the identification of specific cell types in pancreatic tumors utilizing both tissue architecture and gene expression. On the right is a study from the Hato Lab at the Indiana University School of Medicine that used a single cell with Visium data to spatially localize key cell types in the septic kidney. As you can see in the figure shown here on the extreme right, combining both datasets resulted in a richer annotation of the different cell types. I'd like to end this master course with a quote from the Nature Biotech paper. Combining these two complementary and powerful technologies is easily scalable to any architecturally complex tissue and has the potential to provide meaningful biological insight across a range of fields. I do hope that this has inspired you to utilize one or both of these technologies for your research. We hope that you have found this 10x master course on gene expression with Visium Spatial Technology helpful. Please feel free to explore our other master course in this series, as well as our original master course series on single cell technology. Do follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter, or Facebook for the most up-to-date information from 10x Genomics. Thank you for tuning in. We hope to see you at one of our webinars or in-person events soon. Goodbye.